Okay, this activity is actually now going to change directions where what you have been doing thus far is you were given functions and you were asked to find rates. Where we will be going, not quite all this week, but starting with it, is now you will be actually given a derivative and go back to find the function. So we're going to be working more with rates this week. So talk about how your milestone went. And so this is kind of the start of the material with in integration. We won't quite get to this um, this week, but we will be moving into this. And typically this is at the end of a Calculus 1 and then moves you into Calculus 2 course. So remember that this little E thing, you might have seen that in Excel, that just means to sum something, add up, a, add up a whole bunch of stuff, right? And what are we going to add? Well, this N value is the number of, and if we're looking at our graphs, rectangles, or if you want to call them subintervals, the change in X would be the width of the rectangle, rectangle or subinterval. The A would be the start starting value in the interval, and the B would be the ending value in your interval. So you can kind of see that here. And so what this section is all about is how could we find this area right now with rectangles. We're going to move to this, which is your calculus part, but we're not there yet. So patience, patience. All right. So this talks about, you know, just kind of leads you through of how you could find area underneath this rate. So this is a constant rate right here. Well, you should be able to look at this and say, oh, well, that's just a rectangle. I can find that area. The problem is, is, and I, this is just for you to kind of play around to change this value of B to then be able to see um, how easy it would be two times two to find this area of four. But the problem arrives when Charlie, our three-legged dog, if they don't walk, if the rate isn't constant, and this is a constant rate. And as you know, if you've been on 1604, that does not happen, right? You end up going two miles, you end up going 80 miles per hour and all that kind of good stuff. So that's what happens here with Charlie is, is his rate is more, looks like this triangle. Well, once again, I could find the area of this triangle. It's easy, right? Area is one half base times height. And once again, you can kind of play around, um, you know, with this as well. There's no work to do on this slide. But where the problem lies is what if we have this type of rate? So in other words, this is somebody that shoots out of the gate, um, you know, at three miles per hour. Then they go sniff some grass and then they take off running. They saw a squirrel and then they go and, you know, and then they kind of end the end of the walk. And, and this is the issue uh, why we need calculus, because we can't. I mean, you could try to find you know, say, well, I could do a rectangle here, but then you'd have some error. So what smart guy came along, Riemann Sum, said, why not make all of this rectangles? And yes, you can see there is going to be error, but this at least gives us a an idea how we could do this, how we could estimate. And that's what Riemann Sums is, is estimating area. Now, when you do these rectangles, how you draw them, a lot will depend on are they a left-hand sum and a right-hand sum. And students make this way more difficult than what it really is. The left means does it touch the left corner of the rectangle? So that looks like that would be a left-hand sum. The right says you're touching the right-hand corner. And so that would be a right-hand sum. Now you have to be careful with these because notice that if your function is increasing, notice that this area is overestimating. Okay, so that's a right-hand sum as well. But notice here if, you know, depending on what your function looks like, if you're decreasing, this is an overestimate. So you want to be careful on 
will a lower sum start with the first table value, meaning that these are going to be table values. And that's only sometimes, right? Because as you're learning how to take um, each one of these values, add them up and multiply by the change, well, it depends on this first, first value and last value in the table. So you want to be careful with that. All right, so as I mentioned on the other, I told you what all these values were. A is your starting value, zero. B is your ending value. N is the number of subintervals. So you count those, and then the change in X is how your X is changing. Let you do that. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually graph a function that we want to find the area underneath this function. So to do that, typically what you like to do, okay, after you graph, is you put this in a table. It's just kind of nicer if you have it in a table um, to be able to plot things. So here it says I'm on the interval 4 to 25. You know what that means? I start at 4 and I end at 25. But how are these values changing? Notice here it says approximate three rectangles. If you remember, there's a little rule that says the change in x is b minus a over n where b is my ending value a is my starting value n is my number of rectangles so i think that would be what 21 over 3 so that says my change in my x is 7. So that means this is going to jump by 7, 11, 18. And if I add 7, I better end up there, right? And it definitely looks like I did. So then what you do is you're finding, now notice that this is a derivative. Okay, so this graph we're looking at is a derivative. Let me get rid of all this junk out of my way. And I want to find the area underneath this rate. And I'm going to do this with rectangles. So first thing I'm going to finish this table, I'm going to take this two square roots of x. So two square roots of four, square root of four is two, two times two is four. And I'm probably going to have to pick my calculator up. Well, there's one right here. And so, oh, I don't like that one. Let's do this one. And so the next one's going to be two times the square root of 11. And somewhere it told me round to two decimal places, so 6.63. Then I'm going to have two square roots of 18. So that looks like that's 8.49. And then this, I know the square root of 5 is, the square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. And I got all these correct. And I can tell it to add it, so plot it. And it plotted my points. All right, so now from here, I want to do a left rectangle and a right rectangle. We don't know yet which is going to be a lower sum or an upper sum. So let's do a left. I'll change my color here because I can't draw a straight line. I'll grab this line tool. A left hand says that the left corner is touching that rectangle. So there's my first rectangle. It started at 4 and it went to 11. That's what my table says to do, right? And now I'm going to go up to this one. If I can draw a straight line. And then this should go to, what, 18? And then finally, this goes here. Can't even draw a straight line with a straight line. And if I was going to calculate the area, which I will here in a minute, I'm calcul calculating the area underneath those rectangles. Well, how do we do a right-hand sum? So notice it says do right rectangles as well. This, you actually, the right corner is touching. Now, you might say, oh, so I do this. Well, I don't think that that is in my domain. My domain is um, 4 to 25. If you notice the left hand, I started at 4. So where do you think the right hand is going to start? You'd start one over at 11. So my right hand actually is going to look like this. 
Well, I try. Lord knows I tried. And then I go up to here, I go across, I go down here, and then this one, I go to here and across and here. So I could find this area. And that's how to draw these actual rectangles. And so that's what it asks you to do here to find the approximate area for the left hand. I think you're gonna add four, I'll get a calculator here. I think you're gonna add four plus 6.63 plus 8.49, oops. And you're gonna multiply it by what? I think seven because the change in X was seven. So 133.84 and I rock, I knew that already. I'll leave it up to you to find the, the right rectangles. All right, there, this is actually a homework question that I get asked a lot. So what if you had this problem and it says now instead of four subintervals and how I know there's four, one, two, three, four, what if I wanted to change this into two subintervals? Let me grab this and grab a page here. Oops. And so what you're doing instead of, so remember, how do I know this is four subintervals? One, two, three, four. I mean, so n is four. My change of t actually is four because it's jumping by fours, right? My a is zero, just kind of a review, and my b is 16. All right, but what if they said now change it to two subintervals? This is kind of what I do. Because this would be one, two subintervals. Now notice what happens. My n became two. My change in t looks like it's jumping by eight. My a and b did not change. So just remember that because that is a homework question that I get asked that a lot. Um, what this is actually doing is just kind of showing you that as the number of rectangles go to infinity, you're going to get this smooth curve, which is where we are going. I mean, that's kind of the point is we want more rectangles and go back to the very first slide which is where this is going to be going, oops, next week to this piece now. So you're doing this piece, you may not realize you're doing it, but you're summing up the width times the height. That's what this piece is. Then coming up, we're gonna take the limit and do some calculus with it.